Welcome everyone to my Bible study session here on YouTube. I love to just dive into God's word. And so I'm excited that you have joined me for this occasion. If this is your first time checking out my channel, my name is Deanna, but just call me Dee. <laughs> I'm a faith-based content creator and I love God and I love uplifting and encouraging my sisters in faith while we're on this faith journey. So if this is something you are interested in, please subscribe to our community. Today, we'll be exploring Deuteronomy chapter 11 using the SOAP method. If you're new to the SOAP method, it stands for scripture, observation, application, and prayer. And it's really a great way to study the Bible systematically and apply its truths to our lives. So I want you to grab your Bibles and your notebooks and let's get started. Let's begin to read through the passage, Deuteronomy chapter 11, 13 through 23 and 26 through 28. And then we'll dive into the study using the SOAP method. And it reads, so if you faithfully obey the commands I'm giving you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send the rain on your land and in its season, both autumn and spring rain, so that you may gather in your grains, new wine and olive oil. I will provide grass in the fields for your cattle and you will eat and be satisfied. Be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down to them. Then the Lord's anger will burn against you and he will shut up the heavens so that it will not rain and the ground will yield no produce and you will soon perish from the good land the Lord is giving you. Fix these words of mine in your hearts and minds. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Teach them to your children, talking about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates so that your days and the days of your children may be many in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, as many as the days that the heavens are above the earth. If you carefully observe all these commands I'm giving you to follow, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out all these nations before you and you will dispossess nations larger and stronger than you. And then verse 26 through 28 reads, see, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing if you obey the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. The curse, if you disobey the commands of the Lord your God and turn away from the way that I command you today by following other gods, which you have not known. So what we can see from this passage of scripture is we have Moses, right? Who is reminding the Israelites of God's faithfulness and the importance of obeying his commands as they are preparing to enter into the promised land. The chapter also highlights the blessing that comes from following God's command, as well as it is warning them of the consequences of disobedience. And then it concludes with a powerful reminder of the choice that they have between the blessing and the curse that comes with obedience or disobedience to God's command. So as we are really um, observing this passage of scripture, we see how God really desires for his people to love and obey him, like not a little bit wholeheartedly. And he wants them to teach his commandments diligently to their children and to live in obedience so that they may too enjoy the blessings of the land that he is giving them. And we know the Israelites had a history of disobeying God. So Moses was warning them to take heed of themselves so that their hearts may not be deceived and turn away and not serve other gods. I also believe that God wanted them to never get it twisted about who was the source of their abundance. When we are living in an overflow of God's blessings, it is so easy for us to get besides ourselves. Ego and pride can enter the picture and then we start idolizing and worshiping the blessing and not the blesser. Like our possessions become an idol God and we forget all about God. Now, I always find it interesting that when we're wanting something for God, we pray, we pray, we pray, we ask God, we make all type of covenants with God to get what we want. And when he does blesses us, we forget all about God. We forget that we ever needed him. And I feel like it's giving transactional. It's giving, I don't need God unless it's something that I want. It's giving, 
I don't really care about anything else but myself and what God can do for me and not how I can serve God. And that's not the way we want to live. God is telling us, I can give you the desires of your hearts. I can bless you with all of these great things. You would never have to worry again. You can live off your land and be so satisfied and full. And the only prerequisite is to love and obey me and follow my commands and to teach your children so that we can have this generational cycle of people loving and obeying God. So like the Israelites, we're presented with a choice, either to love and obey God and receive his blessings or serve other gods, the little G, and perish from the land that the big G is giving us. Here's some things that I want you to consider about applying Deuteronomy to our lives today. How can we be more intentional about living in obedience to God? And then the second question is, how can we teach God's word to our families? Let's take a moment to pray. Let's pray for God's help in living out his word and for the strength to obey him wholeheartedly and just for his guidance in teaching his truths to those around us, like in our circle of influence. So please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of fellowship with other believers. Thank you for blessing me with this message to share with others. Help us to live in love and in obedience to you and your commandments. Let us not be enticed or consumed by anything that will take our focus off of you. And last but definitely not least, give us the courage, Lord, to teach and share your truth with those around us so that they too can grow in relationship with you. This we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all again for joining me. You have really made my day. I hope that this brief study has been insightful and encouraging to you on your spiritual journey. Just remember to meditate on God's word throughout the week and definitely work to apply his truth to your life. And until next time, I definitely look forward to you tuning in to another Bible session with me. God bless you all. Mm -hmm.